Welcome back to the number one podcast in your world. We're your hosts, Chase Damore. And Gabrielle Moses. And today, the internet has just been in a whole slew. I feel like everyone's just been bickering and arguing and getting, and getting sued, too. Back and forth, are like unsanctioned Lawsuit. boxing invades, lawsuits. People getting to the hospital, getting De- hurt. Depression. It's been like a whole... It's, it's been, been a, whole been a lot. You know how most weeks are kind of like, oh, one thing happens or this or that? No, every single day it's been like 10 different things. When it rains, it... Pours. Pouring. And let me tell you, the Twitter universe has absolutely been pouring this oh, weekend. Oh gosh, all the Twitter headlines too. Well, first of all, let me just dive right into it. So as we know that Misfits Boxing has been beefing with all the other professional boxing organizations. That's been brewing. It's been coming. It's been coming. We all knew it was going to happen. Exactly. Well, you know, Aiden Ross, me and a kick streamer, and we've talked about Aiden Ross on this podcast. Recently. A lot. And it's just <laughs> like, you know, he, he put on um, a boxing event that was very, you know, I didn't agree with it. I thought it was extremely I thought it was terrible too. I thought it was unsafe. I thought, you know, it was just, it was just seemed very degrading. And most recently, uh, Hype Boxing put on an event this last weekend. And it just goes to show, like, how, you know, the PBA is a prime example of this. Wait, the Hype one was the one that was outside in Florida. Yes. And it looks like it was in someone's backyard, that it, one? It looked like you got the boys after school one day and said, hey, we're going to throw on the gloves. And I have an idea. That's what they said. Yeah, well, we got an idea. <laughs> Bro, Google. They had a how, folding table. For- how to host a boxing event. And that's what it looked like, right? And it you got the PBA. So bad. Wait, the Pro <laughs> Boxing Association sanctioned this that's crazy right and you that got Hasim Hasim Rahman who fought on that card mm-hmm. we're just gonna start here Hasim Rahman who fought on that card for example uh had seven opponents back out ironically enough because we know he backs out of fights and I'm having to fight he's fights. the one that was supposed to fight Alan Alan Belcher the heavyweight bare knuckle champion that I ended up having to fight on 24 hours in Nashville because he pulled out you know the type mm-hmm. of guy that he fought did I show you the clip of him was punching on the side and the guy fell yes, yes 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 that guy took the fight they asked him if he would fight his team that night he that showed, night bro was drinking a beer at the bar and said hey can you fight his team on the okay card? to be fair too his team is also the same one that wore a arm stretcher for post arm surgery for his reasoning of backing out of the fight against Alan Belcher, which you then took. And the only reason why I knew he was faking everything was because my dad has had like several arm surgeries and he pulled up with this like very expensive arm physical therapy device and i'm like wait this guy is saying this is wrong with this arm i'm like i know exactly Gabriel, you were trying to expose is. this man all weekend you're in the press conferences calling this man. this man showed up to the press call oh i'm really injured you go bro chill out my dad had one of those yeah that's not you little it's bro it's literally to stretch your arm after surgery this man was just lying it's actually insane so this most recent weekend they hosted this high boxing event the mm-hmm. pba as we know got fired from misfits boxing chase was robbed justice for chase by the way uh, you know, was fired from, uh, you know, Misfits Boxing, and yes. now Misfits Boxing is now in, sanctioning a whole new judging. Yeah, regime. who are they even going to be using? Uh, they uh, Most recently, they used the, the Polish Boxing Board, and then America, they're going to use some other, you know, situation. But regardless, mm-hmm. is so now the PBA is, is pinching for scraps now, so now they're sanctioning backyard boxing with the boys, uh, oh, a.k.a. Gosh. hype boxing. Uh, it, was, it was actually terrible. We had... First of all, let's, let's talk about the call outs. Let's talk about. Oh, you got called out. I got called out by. You said, hold my phone. A whole, said, yeah, like, bro, like, <laughs> I'm sipping a beer on an island and, you, and you're fighting in the backyard calling me out. Well, first of all, let's talk about him for a second. Keith Burke, he spent, uh, what, like 10 years in prison. He's tattooed from head to Wait. foot. He's got like a stab charge or something. I don't know. Yeah, we're you were to... talking about him on Discord. Right, we were talking about him on Discord. So basically, I got this nice little clip. I'm going to put it right here. Main event, I think Anthony Taylor definitely would, but that fight's off now. I don't, I don't see much fights that would be, you know, big ones. Big ones to take. That's so annoying that the dude's talking Right, he's, over he's talking over it. But basically what he said, he's like, Chase Damore, where are you at? Stop hiding behind the banner of mams. Uh, I'm coming, bitch. Well, let me let me just called you a bitch. First of all, first of all, nobody calls me a bitch. <laughs> Even whenever I say it joking to you, you get mad. My girl, like, don't call grown men bitches unless you're ready to stand on that. And and let, let's be honest here, like I have never ducked a fight. I've never backed out a fight. The problem I have with fighting this guy is I'm not gonna talk too much on him. I'm not gonna platform him. But if you guys want to do your research on who this guy is, I'm sure you've heard me talking about him a little bit mm-hmm. and what he did and why he's in prison. Is you can reason. Google it. You can Google it. He's done some things that I'm just I'm just not a fan of. 
I mean, I would love more than anything to beat this man down, but dude's fighting in backyard. But it's not even worth it to give him bucks. a platform. Yeah, I'm not platforming this man. This man wants to call me out, wants to call me a bitch, say I'm hiding behind Mams. And I've been on the Twitter space with Mams, and Mams will be the first one to tell anybody. I don't hide behind anybody. In fact, I'm asking Mams every day for a harder guy because I think the guy's... Where's Roman guy. Fury? Like, give me Roman Fury. And then we got Roman Fury... Let's talk about Roman Mr. Fury. Mr. Humpty Dumpty himself. Roman Fury calling me out the same week. And I and I tweeted this out. I said, I said, it just seems like there's every bald freak in their mom just wants to fight me this week. It really is all the bald guys that you fight. Yeah, the bald uglies. And I was like, Roman, worry about the damn hairline and, and, and instead of fighting me. Here's the Roman Fury call out. Fit side. Um, there's a guy there, Chase Demore. He was going back and he said he called out your dad, you, everyone, I think. Roman Fury, 100%. We want Roman Fury next summer. We want the Bald Fury, the Forgotten Fury, uh, you know, we're going to beat the hell out of him. I would dip into that world to kick his bolts off, you know. I don't like him. He's a wanker. He's a big mouth. and he's someone to shut that mouth up, but it's going to be me. A winker. <laughs> Roman Fury, if you're watching this, buddy, a lot of people have said they're going to shut my big mouth up. Look, I'm, I'm 26 years young, and it's yet to be done. You know, the day my mouth... Look, I always say I'm going to get You still got. talk shit every single day. I'm going to get got one day, but listen, they're going to hear me before I get got. 26 years, and, and I've never been got. And Roman Fury, you're... you're What did you call him? Humpty Dumpty? Humpty Dumpty. Listen, but I you're, photoshopped his head You're going to sit on the wall, and, uh, you know, you photoshopped his head to the guy from... Uh, oh, the one... From who Austin Powers. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. One million dollars looking ass. Like, buddy, but he, could, he couldn't box eggs, Gab. Like, the guy. I've the never guy, seen him box. I've, I've watched him. He's, he's, he's obviously not good. Terrible. His brother's the heavyweight champ, and let's just say this this apple fell really far from the tree. Well, uh, that's good. Well, it's an it, interesting I, show. It's good. I call him the Forgotten Fury. So we got Keith Burke. We got Keith Burke, a.k.a. Mr. Uh, Felon, convicted, uh, handcuffs himself, fighting in backyards, calling me out. We got Roman Fury, the forgotten bald Fury, uh -huh. whose brother's the heavyweight champ. Called. Maybe those two should box. And the winner of that I would consider, uh, you know, talking to. Because, look, and I'm, I'm Red Panty Knight. We all know that. I'm, I'm the, you go home and you tell the boys you get to fight Chase tomorrow. I'm the guy that's providing the paychecks. And, look. The I'm views. Not, uh, the views. Exactly. I'm the guy that's giving them the views. I'm the guy that's going to beat them all up. And I'm not going to give them uh, no more impression. We got the PBA saying. Sanctioning mm -hmm. uh, backyard boxing. We got Keith Burke. Uh, you know, I told him instead of calling me out, he should call his probation officer. Uh, and we got Roman Fury, who's who's trying to who's trying to talk about boxing when he boxed an Uber driver and got beat up by him. So you haven't even opened up one of the eggshells either of what's going on with misfits and the lawsuits. Oh yeah, you... that's a whole other thing too. Like I know we're talking a lot about boxing today, but that's just because there's so much so drama. Much and so much tea going on, including lawsuits. Well, as you know, first of all, the boxing community is small, the fight community is small, so it just seems that yeah. everybody a part of the fight community is just like rallying against one another. And right now, Misfits Boxing, I fight for them as it's my promotion, I love them dearly, but mm -mm. they're handing out sanctions. They're suing people. They're suing Aiden Ross uh, for potentially trying to host an event that was unsanctioned. Uh, Wait, gonna... So what's their grounds though? Because Aiden wasn't signed to them. Uh, the grounds are basically uh, with a compete clause. So in order for Misfits Boxing to put on a show, they have to get it sanctioned through some sort of fight organization. Oh, it no. takes time. They have to get a venue. It takes time, money, effort, energy. And so there's a compete clause in there basically saying like, for example, if you're Misfits and you're paying all this money and then somebody with an equally big platform comes along and says, hey, we're going to do all this for free and we're not going to sanction it so it doesn't cost us any money. More uh, fight, so we could pay fighters more. So it's because it's unsafe. Yeah, so yeah. it's more unsafe. They don't have to pay for insurance. They don't have to pay for liability. So it's like, if you're trying to compete with somebody, well, in order to fight on Misfits, you got to do X, Y, Z. You're going to get drug mm -hmm. tested. You're going to do this and that. Or you could come fight on this card, get paid more or the same amount of money mm -hmm. uh, and not have to worry about any of that. So it, it, it causes issues. And then they were also pulling fighters from the Misfits pool. Mm. Obviously, most recently, the, Dean the Great. Yeah. Uh, we've had him on the podcast. Check him out here. Um, Dean the Great came on the pod. Uh, he was talking about the drama that he was dealing with at the time. Now he's re-involved. He's talking about... Uh, Different drama now. Yeah, he was really dark on Twitter this last weekend. Was, I was scared for him. I was scared Because every for time him. you're boxing, he usually boxes, like, right after you with the same coach. And mm. so, like, I'm usually standing there talking with him and, like, chatting it up. Like, he's a sweet kid. Great and kid. so... Whenever you were like, he oh, said, "Kid, you guys are the same exact." We're the age. same age, you know what I mean. He's a few months younger than me, right. okay. But no, I was worried about him too because, like, when you see someone on social media with such a big platform tweeting such dark things, yeah, I was like, "Oh my gosh, where did this come from?" Because usually he's so happy and bubbly. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then like recently he was tweeting out, there's some couple dark tweets on there. He was saying he wanted to retire from boxing. He was in a dark spot. He's like, mm -hmm. he was mentally battling. He didn't want to, you know, harm himself. Whatever it was, there was a lot of people worried for him. And I was calling him every day. And, uh, you know, here's the thing is like, I'm really close with Dean. Uh, and, you know, Dean and I, we, I've, you know, basically been doing this boxing thing just as long as he has. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot going for him. He's a champ. And like today he was tweeting now that he wants to vacate his belt. And, I, and I'm the first one to go on Twitter and oh, say, I didn't even see that. Yeah. That today? Oh, yeah. I went on Twitter and I was like, listen, ain't nobody vacating any belt. All those little lightweights that think that they're good, that are all getting beat up by Dean. Listen, I'm going to drop down to super lightweight. And I'm going to come kick all your asses before I let Dean give up that belt. You know, goddamn. You're like, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So stop licking your chops, all, the, all those people out there. And, and speaking of licking the chops, there's some fighters out there that really just piss me off. Gab, let me tell you about, you know, who pisses you off, Chase? Let's get that list ready. Let me get Pen the list ready. For a whole journal. Let me get that list ready. It's not even that. It's like, you know, we're both friends with Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor. Oh, what did he do? I'm just like, we're friends with him. Why is yeah. he commentating on hype boxing when he signed to Misfits? That's already a no compete. Why is he doing that? Is he not going to get sued by Misfits too? Why is he promoting Prime on another fight card when Prime had no association with that event at all? And then why is Anthony Pretty Boy Taylor at the same time talking about, oh, if I'm Chase Moore, I'm staying far away from this guy because this guy's scary looking. That's the biggest difference between me and Anthony Taylor. So I'm not scared of anybody. And this guy ducks the, the hardest fights. And I'm friends with him. And I love the guy. And I've traveled with the guy. And you know we're very close with Anthony Taylor. But mm -hmm. I, at the same time, I would tell any one of my friends, like, bro, you and me are not the same. So. Yeah. You know, and, and have you talked to him since he said all that? You know, he knows better than to call me because I'm gonna cuss his ass out. I'm gonna be like, listen, bro, you know, I love you, but I'm gonna cuss you out at the same time. Don't ever go on a broadcasting network and say, ah, if I'm Trace the more, I'm really scared of this guy. Like, I ain't scared of nobody, buddy. Um, and you're not me at the same time. Oh, no. I, I, and the top of that, so now going back to what I was saying about how Aiden Ross was getting sued by misfits. Mm hmm. He is putting on, a, he said, because Misfits sanctioned them with suing and X, Y, and Z, Misfits is now, or he is now competing with Misfits. And so what he did is he, in 72 hours, got an event sanctioned to fight on Saturday, March 23rd, this coming weekend, Thanks. or this past weekend, whenever you're watching this podcast, um, to have an event at the exact same time as Misfits. And this is, mind you, Misfits is smaller card. So this is a non-pay-per-view card. This is the smaller creators. I think the main event is uh, most wanted in Fox to G. It's like smaller creators. So the uh, it's it's better in Aiden's favor because Aiden is bringing on bigger personalities. Aiden's got a bigger platform. He's trying to basically fight against the zone, fight against Misfits, and put on an event at the exact same time to to do this compete thing. But it doesn't make sense because it's like he's shooting himself in the foot. He's shooting himself in if the foot. If he wanted to, he could work with Misfits. Work with Misfits. You make even can't. more money. Exactly. You're you're gonna take your yourself, uh -huh. your net worth, whatever you made off of kick streaming and all your brand deals, and you're gonna compete against Mams Taylor, KSI, Logan Paul, and the entirety of Prime, the Zone, and every one of the influencers, major influencers. I think he has a little bit of an inflated ego right. a bit, just because yes, he does really well. He is very successful on kick. On kick. But that's Kick. Right, but but what I'm saying, Gab, is like he's taking what. Okay, he might make more than an individual influencer, but I promise you. Well, duh. He doesn't make more than KSI. He doesn't make more than money than Logan Paul. And then I would say he probably makes about as much money as three influencers on the, uh, three of the major influencers on Misfits Boxing. So I'm talking. You could take like a combination of like you know you could take like Slam Dean myself or like you know yeah. like, he probably makes as much as this, but. Mrs. Boxing has such a big roster. It's like, why is Aiden Ross, and I've never met Aiden Ross. I'm sure he's a really nice kid, but it's like, why is he trying to compete against something that he knows financially he would Wait, never beat? He owns part of Kick, right? I think he's the CEO. Really? I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm going to have to Google that later. <laughs> Let me, I'll sure. double check it, but I'm pretty sure he's the CEO of Kick. Well, that makes sense why he's so successful on but Kick. But Kick is a part of Misfits, too. What? Yeah. If you see, look at the Misfits flyer, it says... See, I'm oblivious to, like, very important things sometimes. I'm like, oh, who's that? Who are they associated with? Right. Like, I just talk to people to talk to them. And Kick is a part of Steak and uh, all that stuff. Oh, Let's yes. See. I know that say, Steak is a part of Misfits. I do know that for sure. But that's crazy if he's actually the CEO. You can't just Google who's the CEO of Kick. Um... Uh... Well, it's not because it's a multi it's a multi country platform, so they have like CEOs in every country. 
That's not right. It doesn't matter how many countries a company is president. You have one CEO. Well, it says uh, nationality Australia is Edward Craven. And then it says there's an operator. Then there's co-founders. It's also um, partnered with Stake. Do you know Stake, the casino yes, betting thing? Yes, the betting. Yeah. So, I mean, but Stake is also a part of Misfits Boxing. Mm-hmm. If you're having trouble finding that special someone, definitely go and check out our sponsor for this video, which is Fleur. It's a sex positive dating app that prioritizes women's desires. If you want to get to know the person that you're chatting with, there's even a Fleur Sparks game, which is a card game that's in chat that actually helps users learn more about each other in a really fun way. It's the best place to find people with similar desires and fantasies and want to explore them. But don't you worry, there's a two-step verification and moderation for all users. So it's a super safe community and there's no room for a friend's judgment or scams. If you're looking for a fun way to spice up your dating life, Fleur is the perfect place for you. Whether it's for long-term relationships, one night stands, friends with benefits, or even just sexting, this is the perfect app to have fun and explore on. And now back to the podcast. So Steak's part of Mrs. Boxing. So that's where it could be an issue because they overlie. Right, so now he's putting on an event. He's streaming it on Kick. Mm -hmm. Kick is, sponsor, is owned by Steak. Steak is also going to be part one of the sponsors for DAZN. Mm-hmm which is streaming this week in Nashville for Misfit. So there's just like a whole lot of like overlap going on with that. That's kind of funny. Right. He said a big F you to Misfits. I'm going to host my own event at the exact It's not going to work. It's going to fail. It's going to flop. I'm kind of interested to see how it does though. This is like all the drama online. So now we got Dean wanting to vacate because he was supposed to box Adam Tila on, on his event. And then Dean hosts his own like little sparring thing that ended up getting also reprimanded because if Aiden Ross's thing is gonna get um, reprimanded for trying to put on an section event. Then Dean's is too. Then Dean is as well. And that Yay. affects other people because now people were flying out to be a part of Dean's event. Mm -hmm. Now they gotta cancel their plans. They're, they're, that's no longer happening. So there's just been like a lot of this, this last weekend was big in the boxing universe. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of like overlap, a lot of issues. And it's gonna stem into this weekend as we know that I'm supposed to be in Nashville this weekend. I'm probably not gonna go, but like I'm supposed to be there. <laughs> and uh, be there in spirit. Do you know who is gonna be in Nashville? Mr. Nathan Diaz. The biggest coward oh, on the like, internet. It's a tr a the softest question. sponge out there. All right, him and his old posse. Your favorite person. Chris, the water boy of Vila, is going to be boxing. I think he's going to lose. Is he actually boxing? Yeah, him? and then the winner of that has to fight Idris Virgo, and Idris Virgo is going to stop both of them. He can fight them both the same night. Um, oh, no. Chris Vila's fighting this weekend. Nate, Nate Diaz, Diaz has a special place in your heart. No, at Nate, the bottom place of hell. Nate Diaz has got a got a got a special place in hell right next to me. All right, I'm going to yeah. be there for extensive heartbreak, and he's going to be there for just being a piece of shit. So I mean, like you know, uh, to each their own uh you know how you feel about nate yeah you know um fuck him he's the biggest pussy ever and uh i hope to i hope that uh you know if i do wind up in nashville it's not going to be a 5v1 this time buddy i'm going to make sure i'm i'm squatted up just as much as you and i'll take my five best he'll, and his five best and we'll see who walks out of that one because you'll make sure your friends are swinging right right i had a i had a, a 5-2 blonde girl and me versus five ufc fighters and they couldn't get the job done so uh, didn't you know, go well I, I like those odds i like those odds in my favor and i hope that uh you know uh you know i was i was Specially ordered by Mam Staler himself to um, not interview nice. myself with with him, and I said, "Listen, I'll bring my anti-water uh, bottle repellent underwear, and if that doesn't work, then all bets are off. I won't pick up a metal chair this time. I promise that." But uh, hey, he started it. He's the one who threw the water bottle at your head. That almost hit me. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, fuck Nate Diaz and his entire crew, and exactly. uh, yeah, hope to see them pussies in Nashville this weekend. Mm. But you have some other big stuff coming up too. Netflix. Uh, and the Family Feud Trivia Night? Oh, yeah, May 5th. May 5th, uh, yeah. we will be hosting. If you guys, link in bio, there's going to be some tickets for that. We are going on Family Feud. It's going to be Netflix versus uh, The Circle. Uh, May the 5th at 6 p.m. will be on Family Feud. Uh, and it's going to be trivia questions. And I think they're in trouble there. I'm Dad. excited to watch I think it. they're in trouble because here's the thing. If one of my special talents, and I've said this way before they asked me on, on Family Feud, is I know so many stupid random facts mm -hmm. and that is it's what makes me yeah, I you're guess, like scrolling on tiktok especially about the ocean oh my god if it's any biology any science anything about the brain they're screwed gab it's over with it's over is there with. like a cash prize for this do you know i'm not sure what the cash prize is obviously they pay us to be there but it's it's great for the fans mm -hmm. fans can come out uh, it's netflix is a joke uh, fest week so it's a bunch of netflix things they're going to be our your favorite reality tv stars uh we will be out there competing against other um shows so if you're a two out the handle fan 
uh, or you're a circle fan, if you want to watch me beat up on the beat up on the, if you want to watch me uh, without talking about out, boxing, outsmart <laughs> some of the circle people whose entire job is to outsmart people, and our job is just to be hot. Um, I, I can't wait to to prove that metal wrong. So May the fifth, uh, we'll be going into that. But most recently, I want this is a dating podcast. I do want to talk about the dating oh, no. story. Which the dating one? Story. The one with the Uber driver. <gasps> The Uber driver. The Uber driver. I have no idea what you're talking about. Let me tell you. Like, <laughs> I got robbed. Oh, the one that gypped you of like $300. Oh, you got way more than that out of me. You got way more than $300 out oh, of me. Oh, God. And, and I'm going to send you the video so we can play the video right yeah, here. Yeah, I'll, I'll edit it in. Um, but basically, in the video, you see me talking to this guy. This guy goes, listen, your friend threw up in my car. And I want to say that was not me. It wasn't you. It was not me. I'm not messy like that. Well, first of all, I could tell this guy was a finesser guy. Yeah. You could always tell. It's finesse. in Mexico too. Uh, Australia. 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 Not anything pertaining to Australians or, or Australian audience. But yes, uh, it was in Australia. This guy was definitely a finesser because uh, we're out of the bar, we're out of the club, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the Uber driver, he pulls up to pick us up. And I instantly, he's like looking, trying to pick out like who looks the most drunk, right? And I go, listen, buddy, like uh, it's not going to be me. All right. So we're getting in the Uber driver, uh, the Uber driver. We're getting in the Uber, headed home. And he goes, well, first of all, I'm headed home, and one of the drunk bitches comes out, and she's like, oh, I need a ride home, right at the same boat. Whatever. Come on. Gets in the car. We're driving, and the Uber driver looks back right at me, right at me, because I'm sitting in, like, the front. She's in, like, the back back, and he goes, just to let you know, uh, Uber has, like, a $600 cleaning fee if anybody throws up in the Uber. And I'm, like, looking, and I'm, like, yo, bro, like, I'm not even drunk. Like, <laughs> nobody's You're, like, I'm throw. chilling. I'm chilling, right? But I, uh, mind you, I booked this Uber. We're headed back. And uh, the girl that was in the back decides to yak all over the place. So then the guy pulls over to like this cleaning station and I get out and I pay like the fee to get like the cleaning. Nah, you should have taken her Venmo or credit card, take a picture. This girl of that. is not even coherent. Like, I So then you God. should have taken her wallet. Right. <laughs> Black guy steals drunk girl's wallet. Right. If she's the one that threw up in an Uber, yes. If you threw up in, in an Uber that I paid for, I would be taking your wallet. That's called WP. Anyways, <laughs> moving on from WP. What uh, is WP? Uh, it's, it's a terminology that us colored folk use when uh, something works in your advantage and not ours. Don't worry? Yes. WP. Don't worry. Good job. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um... Uh, so glad I think she's not playing Family Feud on May, fit, on, uh, May the 5th. Uh, listen, so, um, yeah, so she throws up all over the Uber. I'm out there cleaning it up. I, I hate drunk girls. I hate throw up. I'm tired. I don't want to go home. So clean this up. Whatever. Get back to the hotel. and uh, Or the Airbnb. It's in a hotel building. Whatever. We get back to the place. And I get out of the car. And the guy goes, listen, bro. If you just pay me $200 right now. I will not report it to Uber. I was like, it's already cleaned up. He's like, yeah, but I can still report it. You're gonna get charged. You already paid to clean it. You know what I mean? You don't wanna get double charged. Vanessa. So I took a video and I was like, so you're telling me if I pay you right now, if I tap your thing and I pay you Venmo, whatever the hell it was, you're not gonna report it to Uber. He goes, yeah, no problem. I was like, cool. So I recorded him, I recorded his license plate and I walked away. I woke up the next day and the guy still reported it to Uber. So then I got charged a $600 cleaning fee from Uber. Then I got charged his $200 that he stole from me. And then whatever it was to pay for all the throw up and shit. Why did you not report him to Uber? You had a video. Well, the problem is, is I don't know if I really could because one. It was Uber, Uber has a support line. Yeah, but is it because I'm not Australian? I I've coming? used it for Uber Eats before when someone spilled my coffee. Or the time the guy was opening our pizza. And he oh my gosh, yeah. One time um, I went downstairs to go grab like the pizza that we ordered from Uber. And I'm walking there because it's under Chase's name. And so I don't think he was like expecting a girl to walk down. I'm full on seeing this man opening up the pizza box, trying to rearrange the pizza because he drove there on a bike. He obviously dropped the freaking pizza. And I'm like, uh, is that what me? it was? Yes, he dropped it. So he was trying to like fix the cheese to make it not look as fucked so up. So he, he opened up my and pizza. And he was touching it with his bare hands. I'm like, 
He opened up our pizza box. He grabbed yeah. the cheese that was melted on top. He tried to pull it back. And then you walked down there while he was doing this and he closed the top and handed you the box. No, because as he's doing it, that's when I walk up. His back is towards me, but I see everything that's happening. And I go, uh, order for Chase. And he goes, yep, here you go. Walks away. Doesn't even do like the order confirmation, like picture or anything. And the seal was broken. So then that's what I took a picture of was the broken seal outside as he's walking away. And so you got all your money back. Did we get the money back? Yes, 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 yes. Because it was like a $50 pizza with the delivery fee. Uber be robbing people sometimes with the delivery fees. We were just if talking you, about this yesterday. We were we? talking about it yesterday. Like literally if you order like an app or dog food or whatever, they charge like an extra $2 on every single item at the store. They're making a bank. Like why couldn't we have thought about making Uber Eats or Instacart? We'd so, be rich. so the way you do it, the way you do it is because you buy a bunch of just random shit all oh. the time, right? So you just bought a, a, a cake baker or whatever mm. the hell, you a mixer is what you bought, right? Yeah, I bought a mixer. So why don't you just take that mixer, right? And you just go on your Instagram and be like, hey, everybody, I'm going to, I'm going to charge $5 a cupcake, right? And then, That's but, a steal. But if, but if you want the cupcake delivered to you, then you got to pay an extra dollar for the cupcake. So it's actually a Wait, $6 actually cupcake. And then if you want somebody to drive it to you, then no. you have to pay the delivery fee, which is another $2. So now you're paying $8 a cupcake, right? And then, listen, listen, and then you got to tip the driver yourself. I have yourself. a better story. I have a much better story. Sounds like Uber. No, one of my Twitch subscribers is a very big Gab fan. He which loves one? me. Jonathan. Jonathan. We love Jonathan. I like CPT. Oh, yeah, they have a few big Twitch fans, but Twitch he fans. donated 2,000 subs onto my Twitch within right. a year. 2,000 subs? Yes. At $5 a sub? No, six. Six dollars. Because he was doing it from the mobile phone. So do the math. $12,000 he spent. Listen. Which we love, Jonathan. I Number just, one fan, shout out, Jonathan. Imagine being a 5'2 blonde girl. It's like I'm nowhere to be found. I am 5'4. It's I'm like sorry. I could live in LA and never find a 5 freaking 4 blonde girl. Not like me. You couldn't. I'm 1 Apparently, in a million. It like, sounds Missouri. like 1 in 12,000, it sounds like. Anyways, so he spends $12,000 on my Twitch channel. And I go, well, to celebrate you hitting the 2,000 sub mark, I'm going to send you some cookies. Like you're saying, like if you want. Cupcakes. You know, somebody tipped me one time. Tipped you one time on Twi on I stream on Twitch and kick they tipped me. They said, "Hey, bro, you're doing a good job. I got this half-eaten burrito. I'm sending it to you. I said, Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for so that." They didn't even like send you a sub. I got, just... I got a half-eaten burrito in the mail. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. <laughs> he said, "What's but mine anyways, is yours." Back to my story about the cookies. I literally whipped up some homemade cookies for him. I got his address for Jonathan. Yes, and I made a handwritten card and I sent them to him. So if you spend twelve thousand dollars on my Twitch account, I will make you homemade cookies and a homemade card. So you're telling me that Jonathan got some burnt cookies for twelve. No, they're grand. amazing cookies. He told me he ate them. I'm sure he did. I overnighted them to him. I and spent like two hundred dollars on shipping. I bet you okay? a fingernail fell in here. No, <laughs> no, he was a sweetheart. He sent a picture of him like opening it up. Isn't that sweet? I thought I was so thoughtful for that. You sent him some burnt ass cookies. No, you ate the cookies too because I made extra for you. And you told me that they were the best cookies you've ever had, so don't lie now. So, so what you're telling me is, so I got free twelve thousand dollar cookies. Yeah, you got free twelve thousand dollar cookies. Jonathan, he paid twelve thousand. I'm gonna promise you, Jonathan, if they're the same cookies we ate, those cookies were not worth. They were so grand, good. You don't got robbed. My cooking. You got robbed. I'm rob. a decent cook. Okay, baker. baker, 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 baker. I've made you cakes before. Your little mini birthday cake. You could give me a compliment every now and then. You when know? did you bake? You baked the dog. You, I've never got a baked cake from you. You baked the dog a birthday really, cake. Really? Whenever you came back to the United States and I made you a USA cake? You only made a USA cake because you baked the dogs a cake and had a shit ton of leftover frosting. And no. you bought the more food. The dog's frosting was made out of Greek yogurt. Your frosting You told me, frosting. first of all, no, you're a cat, because you told me, I'm you said, the reason it's red is because I was making <laughs> the dog the cake. No. No. I made you a cake out of the generosity of my heart. And it had nothing to do with the dogs. Yes, it did. No, it didn't. I will I post will the video. I will argue with you. I will I'm post the video face. of you baking the dog's cake. Because now every time the dogs hear somebody get sing happy, happy birthday, birthday to, they start wagging their tail thinking that I they're I trained them. Yes, because for their birthdays and for their gotcha days, I make them a dog-shaped bone cake. That I'm is so made glad that my dogs are now thinking happy birthdays revolve around the, Yeah, they think they get a cake and a treat. It's the funniest thing ever. Yeah. Your right. dogs might be spoiled. Right. Just slightly, though. Great great pets they are. They um, are. If you guys are looking for new pets, I'm actually giving them away. 
No, you're not. I'm just I'd kill you. <laughs> I'm the just, cat, though. We're not getting rid of my cat. cat. <laughs> I'm not getting rid of my you cat. You could, guys. if it goes missing, it wasn't me. It did go missing. Only once. And it I found bad. him stuffed in a closet. Leave my cat I alone. I didn't know. Okay, so backstory. The cat went missing. I freaked out. Was even like asking security and calling security. And it so happened I may have closed the door while I was pet sitting for you. And he was locked in the closet for a few hours. And you just got a text message from me that all it said is, Gabrielle, where's my $3,000 cat? No, you I texted you have for... have complained nothing. I thought you were pulling a prank on me. You've done nothing but complain for the last two weeks about this cat? Yeah. Where's my $3,000 cat, Gab? Oh, I... I thought you were pulling a prank on me and stole it. You, you probably hit him some, Gabrielle. I am home, and there is no cat here. Where is my cat? Oh, uh, I'll come help you look for it. Security doesn't know where your cat is either. Where is my cat? And you opened the closet, and he was stuffed in the closet sleeping. You go tell me that he my seven-pound Maine Coon cat just is all of a sudden forgot about in the closet. Yeah. It wasn't my fault. I'm, I'm just Peta. not a cat person. I'm calling PETA. PETA, if you're watching this, come get Gabrielle immediately. No, I treat all animals with love and respect, even if I don't like them, like your cat. Anyway, so Gabrielle's birthday is coming up, April 6th. Yes. It is coming up very, very soon. I, listen, if you guys are watching this, you guys are big Gabrielle fans. Everybody, her favorite thing in the world is when people touch her feet. So if you have anything, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> I was like, where are you going with this? I just lost my train of thought, and I started thinking about Have you seen all the Nickelodeon stuff recently? Oh, yeah. They're yeah, so I don't know why, but I was like looking at the camera up here, and I was sitting there thinking, like, is it just me, or has the Nickelodeon logo always been a foot? <laughs> it's not a foot. I it's know, slime. It is slime. Someone posted yesterday oh. and they photoshopped and they go look like a foot as a Nickelodeon. But that whole conspiracy thing, I got stuck going on a rabbit hole on TikTok yesterday as well. Uh, recently, Drake Bell has came out with his documentary talking about uh, Quiet right. on Set. Yeah. I've seen any of that. Mm -hmm. I did see it. It's yeah. so sad. So it happens a lot in the child entertainment industry. It's very sad and unfortunate. I thought we were talking about something happy, aka my birthday, the one day of the year that revolves around me. Right, okay, let's talk about Let's not talk about something sad. What would you like for your birthday, Gabrielle? More Twitch subscribers? More Jonathan? More CPT? We love Jonathan. Yes, we do. More Irish Bailey? I, I would gladly take someone who gets 2,000 Irish Bailey. I know. Jason for Bailey. For my birthday, though, no, I hate my birthday. You've always known that I hate my birthday. It's like my least favorite day of the year because I don't like it. This is coming from the girl that made a YouTube video about how her ex-boyfriend... That was... Based got on... her a car for her birthday. No, he didn't. But you pretended. You were making things up. But in you your pretended head. that he got you the no, car. No backstory but you with that. The car, he manipulated. And then he said to let you make a video. That wasn't on my birthday. That was in November, and it was before Thanksgiving. I'm making my it up. My birthday's though. in April. It's crazy. No backstory of that one. I was manipulated into letting one of my exes fake that he bought me my car because he was telling me how terrible of a person I would be if I didn't let him make a YouTube video of him surprising me with the car I, I th Okay, oh, my fault, my fault. You planned a surprise birthday party and pretended that he threw the surprise birthday party. Oh, that's the other ex. No, he did, he did plan it. I just knew about it. But because he was bad at hiding it from me. That was my 21st birthday. So he planned you a surprise birthday party for your 21st? Yeah. And how did that go? Oh, that was cute. That was a, that was a nice ex-boyfriend. He did a really good job. Like my entire apartment at the time, it was all decorated. There's like a balloons. There was like a flower wall. There was like a two layer birthday cake. It was cute. It was like all purple, like my favorite colors, like turquoise and like light purple and gold. It was cute. He did good. I mean, all my roommates at the time though helped him with it. They pretty much did all the work. And, and you had no work. idea. No, I did. Cause he was really bad at lying to me. So I put things together and I knew it was going to happen. But I just let everyone think that I had no idea the entire time. He didn't even know that I knew. I just, you know, went along with it. And you're like, oh my he God. Was so bad. He was like, oh, we have to be back at your apartment at this time. So and so and so and so is going to meet us there. And then I just put things together and I was like, okay, so it's a surprise birthday party for me. Hey guys, super surprise birthday party here. Uh, it's not so surprising, but uh, listen, uh, basically, um, I threw my. I swear, so you shot a YouTube video with this, no? <laughs> Oh 
Yes, there was a YouTube video, but it wasn't like a surprise, surprise birthday party. It was like a vlog, like my birthday. Like, so vlog. what has been your favorite birthday you've had this far? Hmm. My 16th was terrible, so not that year. Come on. Because I didn't pass my driver's test, but my twin sister did. <laughs> talk well, about a bad birthday. Well, Gab, that was almost 10 years ago, so we're going to talk about something a little bit more not current. 10 years? Don't say that. That makes me sound old. It was eight. So we're going to talk about... Uh... A good birthday? Um, I'd say my 21st was a good one. Okay. Yeah. And what did you guys do? My birthday. What would you guys do after? Like when I say there was 150 people in my tiny college apartment, there was 150 people in there. It was jam packed full of people. Really? It was fun. You just threw like a house. I was the life of the party. Yeah. Well, I hope so. It was your 21st. Yeah, I got all the attention. Did you get drunk? Mm, I don't think I did. You didn't go out to the bars or anything? We did go out to the bars and they tried taking my ID on my birthday. And I was like, it's my 21st birthday. Like I had a birthday sash and everything. Is it? Yeah. And they tried to take your ID. Yeah. How does that work? The manager at that place went to my high school and she did not like me. But. This is what's going on in Catholic school, in Springfield Catholic High School? Yeah, she played soccer. She had taken one of my friend's IDs before that, who had a fake ID. And then it was my turn in line. And I'm like, bitch, why would I bring a fake ID on my birthday? Well, maybe start with not calling the Catholic girl a bitch. And that's probably. She was. She was. I mean, I was she deserves there. that name call. In Springfield, Missouri, where we hang out in Walmart parking lots. We did. And, and pull IDs from birthday sash. You know, at that point, even if I was a bouncer, if somebody showed up with a squad of people, a birthday sash, and, and a yeah. fake ID with that exact we were like day on people it. deep, too, by the time we got to the club. I would have to give a tremendous amount of credit to, to the effort, to the. So anyway, so they let you into the club, right? Yeah, of course they did. It was my birthday. Okay, and so did you get belligerent? Were you throwing up? Did you like? Did you wake up with a hangover? I did drink too many vodka crayons, and now I can't drink them anymore. But that was the majority of college. I don't remember my actual 21st birthday. Like, not step by step, night by night. See, I was more wholesome. Um, you I'm, wholesome? Oh, I did. Really? I, you I, went to church? I, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, no more I would life. have to see a picture to believe that. That I would go to church? I literally have a Bible verse tattooed on my arm. That has nothing to do with it. People who go to hell have tattoos. You went Jesus. to Catholic school and called the nun a bitch. So it I wasn't don't a I nun. Hear. It was a bitch. <laughs> Shit, my bad. My bad. <laughs> no, she was like two or three years older than me. And she just didn't like that the guy that... She wanted to ask her to prom, wanted to ask me, and she was pissed off that I was a freshman getting asked to prom. But, the, but there's a little bit of a backstory. Only in Springfield Catholic High School, guys. Home of the O'Reilly's, home of the Walmart parking lots, and home of the we just pick fights with people just to the, the hell of it. Hey, we had fights at my school. Like oh, fist fights? What Catholic kids are fighting? You stepped on my crucifix, little bro. It was the older brother defending his younger sister. And one of the guys ended up in the hospital on his mom's birthday. And then police were called. There was, it was not a good situation. I'll have you know that my parents, no, that's when they get home happened. from work, that's what they're happened. really going to be cross at you because you put your hands on them. Yeah. Another time someone pulled out like a switchblade at another kid. A switchblade in Catholic school. Yeah. So then they had to. It See, was I heard about the priest. I heard about the priest, but I ain't never heard about a switchblade. That's crazy. The priests were chill i'm sure they were you were they a little bought us girl candy. i'm sure they did <laughs> i'm, I'm not sure even they kidding. did lots of candy. father simon would buy us candy all the time father we were actually talking about this on the last podcast with your sister and her swim coach yeah we were really close since oh, i was 11 yeah. i used to drive two hours to go hang out with them for private swim lessons that okay you make it sound creepy but it really i'm not making it sound creepy i'm saying i'm creepy. literally saying exactly how she said it yeah i got this private swim uh, teacher we've been my coach forever and we're really really close yeah i was her coach i didn't for text years. him letting him know i wasn't going to go to practice and i drove two hours to go Swim at his house. Not at his house. It was You're at his house. You're making it sound so much crazy. It was at his was. house. No, it wasn't. She said you think he has a private swim lessons at his pool at his house, yes. Yeah, there's the four girls from the team that would go and do that. So it wasn't just her alone. You just you're trying to make it sound creepy. I forgot Anyways, devil's advocate here. Back I'm not to making birthday. it sound creepy. Back it is creepy. To my birthday. Uh, yeah, I don't really have any plans for my birthday, like at all. I'll probably get a call from my mom sing happy birthday or something but i don't have anything planned my fa hey gab uh why don't you have your mom come and hang out with you for your birthday no i don't want to hang yeah, out with chase mom. wanted to fly my mom out I don't so that we could spend my, my birthday together and i was like no 
Like, okay, um, okay, I guess. My I'll... mom blows up my phone 24 7. She's already called me three times today. I answered them twice. So. So you saw three? Yeah, I was busy during one of the calls. That's crazy. Sarah, if you're watching this. She probably is. Thanks, mom. Wait, oh, my phone's buzzing right now. Oh, it's a text from my mom. That's great. That's great. Hey, just thinking about you, I saw a flower on the side of the road. No, she sends me like quotes throughout the day to affirmations and stuff. I'm like, thanks, mom. <laughs> really needed that. Well, the apple doesn't fall far, too far from the tree. But uh, listen, listen, uh, do you have some dating stories? For I do have some dating stories. Guys, so you know, I love to do the in the DM section of this little podcast towards the end. And it's pretty much when we ask our followers and subscribers some crazy stuff that has happened in their dating life, whether it be them finding out how they got cheated on, the worst dates they ever been on, or even the worst hookup stories. And Gab likes to be sentimental. She likes to be caring. She always takes the girl's side. But listen, from my perspective, I'm going to tell you exactly what it's like in real land where real people live and real non-rainbow imaginations of what's actually going on. Anyways, this week's prompt is, was I wrong? Absolutely. <laughs> Shut up. I'm glad you admitted it. Okay, so this is what one person swiped up and said, my girlfriend wants to get a tattoo, but I just don't want to get it. My girlfriend's 21 and I'm 22. She wants to, me to get a tattoo of her name. She doesn't care where I get it, arms, legs, back, whatever. She just wants me to get it. Her reasoning behind it is that I have a tattoo of my sister's name on my left chest. And now I should have a tattoo of her name too. I've told her multiple times that my sister also has a similar tattoo of my name. Both we got it to signify a sibling bond, and that's the only tattoo we'll ever get in our lives. She has been throwing hissy fits recently. Is this a valid ground for a breakup? We've been in a relationship for a few years. We love each other. This would be such a stupid reason for a breakup. Yeah, so listen, first and foremost, bro, always always take the bet here. This is, this is what I would do. Listen, you tell her if she tattoos your name on her neck or... Lower back, where it says property of, and then your name. A tramp stamp. Exactly. Um, you agree to get her name tattooed on the inside of your lip. On the in... It's a win-win. It's still tattooed. See, I think this bitch's girl is crazy. It's a win-win. What relationship would you get the other she person's name oh, no, tattooed? No, no, no. She's 100%. The bitch is crazy. The bitch is crazy. Don't get it wrong. But what I'm saying... You're is, dating. You're not even married. If you're taking the crazy bitch, you might as well be like, listen, if you want to tattoo my name on the side of your neck so that... If we're ever not together and that person has to stare at that, it's fine. I will put your name on the inside of my lip knowing that this will be temporary and will come out eventually. And that shit is there until the day that you it just sounds, on daisies. It just really sounds like they're bound to be getting laser tattoo removal <laughs> services pretty soon because like... This is a legitimate argument. It's not breakup grounds. But this is like no. a legitimate conversation. Oh, I think it's breakup grounds. For a tattoo? If you told like someone like, hey, get my name tattooed on you. Even though we're not married. Like, you've only been dating a few years. You think it'd be okay to get their name tattooed on you? I think that's crazy. That's possessive to the max. That's like literally getting a dog collar with their name and number and making them wear it. And people do that. That's crazy. Not I. People not are into I. that. No, it's called bestiality. You. Don't don't ever open up my safari search history. Anyways. I don't want to know that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyways, am I wrong for saying we're bound to break up? I asked my boyfriend, we've been together two years, if he finally made it, like financially stable and is ready to have a family w with me. Would he start a family with me? He replied with, I'd have to think about it. <laughs> like, I would want to be with someone like you forever. I was taken aback because for me, if you are if you have to think about it, obviously I'm not the one. And I, am I wrong? After that, I said, oh, then we're bound to break up. Anyways, he got really mad. I get that we're not really thinking about the future quite yet, but what we're doing now, if we're doomed from the very, very start, what are you doing with me if you're not sure you actually like me as a person or not? So let me break this down. So let me get this right. So basically, Shorty is saying, that she asked him if they're ready. She put him on the spot first. Would you marry me? If you were financially stable and ready to have a family, would you do it with me? And, and they've known each other for how long? They've been dating two years. It didn't say how long they've been like knowing each other. And he said? I would want to be with someone with like you for the rest of my life. I would want to be with someone. But I'd have like to you. think about it. That's fair. That's fair. Statement. I think that's fair if you're 22 years old and you're like, hey, 
Very fair. Do you want to spend the rest of my life with you? Like that type of thing? Yeah. I'd also be like, let me think about it. Like, pause. A hundred percent. I think that's a fair statement. I think... And then he got mad that she said, okay, well, then we're bound to break up. I don't think that that's very I think, fair. Yeah. I think her comment was like a little bit I much. Think, I think that he, he gave a fair response in the sense of, I would like to be with someone like you, meaning he doesn't know everything about her. And I would hope in the two years that they've been together that he wouldn't know everything about this person. You shouldn't know everything about a, a person. If you're committed to something for your entirety of your life, you're committed with that person, but you shouldn't know everything about a single person within two years. It just seems like a lot of information. You're In 22 years of life, you're backing 20 years of information, of experiences, of emotions, condensed into two years. It's tough, it's tough. I would say, I would like to be with somebody like you in the sense of what you are portraying to me in the time I've known you. Yeah, it seems good, but I don't know if that's you all the time. There's mm -hmm. gonna be some shit that- I, I mean, as you grow, you change, so. As well as that. And then there's also, there's also the sense of like, okay, people do dumb shit in their 20s. So it's like- That's fair. Oh, I'm gonna marry you right now. And then it's like, if you do some dumb shit, like I gotta stay with you? Like, no, nah, hold on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Very fair response. I don't think it backs it with the, oh, I think uh, we're bound to break it. No. Sorry, sorry, little bitty bitch. That's not the case. Okay, this one's a little bit more promiscuous, but am I wrong for calling out a loud sexual neighbor? I'm reaching out regarding a situation and I've been experiencing it with a neighbor in my building. Unfortunately, over the past few weeks, I've been dealing with the significant disturbances late at night originating from my neighbor's apartment. The noise level has escalated to the point where it's become so disruptive to my sleep and daily routine. What's particularly distressing is that these disturbances also often involve loud sex on occasion, intimate activities that are audible through the walls. Despite my attempts to approach the neighbor and address the issue respectfully, the neighbor persists, making it challenging to find a resolution. After informing her that we can hear everything, she responded by accusing me of being an inappropriate creep. I brought this up to my building management and there's nothing they could do. I'm thinking I might just post it to OnlyFans. <laughs> if anyone has dealt with similar situations, am I the asshole for telling my apartment or what do I do? I don't know how you would like address this. Listen, I'm a competitive dude. Listen, if she's getting her cheeks clapped, I'm going 10 times louder, little bro. It's a competition. Listen, you have to live in that building. You have to be around that 24 seven. Are you gonna walk to your mailbox or take your trash out in the morning knowing that that guy's laying, going to pound town, to tune town harder, faster, and longer than you? Listen, bro, this is the perfect time to insert a Bluetooth ad. Listen, if you guys wanna- We are not doing a free ad on here, Chase. <laughs> Listen. They gotta pay first. Buy Chase Max. Uh, Chase Max it will, will guarantee you that you will go longer. You will go louder. You will pump harder than every one of your neighbors. Use Unscripted 5. Oh my gosh. If only we <laughs> insert Bluetooth ad. Insert Bluetooth. No, listen. But listen, 100%. 100%. Uh, I think it's, it's so inconsiderate, though, of the neighbor. Listen, like, shut up. I fight, I fight fire with water. Listen, he, she wants to go. Listen. I hate to break this to you. I'm inviting Shorty over from Tinder. I'm gonna be like, listen, Shorty, I got this Just neighbor. Be loud. I got this neighbor, and I want you. If you listen, scream. I want you to scream like like your mother can hear it. Like I want. If she's five states away. I want to make sure that you are so loud, and I am intentionally clapping so hard. I want them to think there's an earthquake going. On. I want there to be a tsunami. So you just be an asshole back. 100. percent And That's then fair. I would go write a note and on their door, under, and you know the note would rate just, my performance. It would. Yeah. One out of ten. Yeah, please give me a five-star rating on Uber, by the way. Uh, I would take it, and uh, there'd be two words on this, this folded piece of notebook paper, and i go stick it on the door. Do you know what those two words would be? Fuck you. Little bro. Oh. Little bro. Okay. All right, and you gotta let him know. Gotta let him know. And he's yeah. gonna open it up one morning. He's gonna look at it, and he's gonna know. He's gonna be like, damn. Yeah. My neighbor heard that. I want I want windows broken or not. I want mirrors broken. I want pictures falling off the walls. And, and then listen, you know what that's gonna do for him, Gab? Hmm. It's gonna make him stop because he's gonna feel. I don't insecure. think they'd stop. He's gonna feel like a little if man. If anything, it'd become he's gonna get a nose. Gonna say little bro. He's gonna feel like a little man. He's gonna be quiet because listen. Now if he doesn't, then I'm gonna do it right outside his door and then sell it on OnlyFans. That's what I would do. 100. Okay. percent Okay. Swipe up. Link in bio. Link in bio. <laughs> okay. The next one. 
Am I wrong for not wearing something sexy when I'm in bed with a person? I often find myself arguing with guys about not putting enough effort getting dressed for bed. During my last relationship, my boyfriend expected me to dress sexy every time before we we're gonna chill in bed. This has been a trend with other men too I've dated or hooked up with. I'm posting this here because I recently went on a date in which we were supposed to stay in, play some video games, smoke pot, and eventually get laid, but the guy called me out for wearing my track pants and sneakers. It was annoying as fuck, and I ended up ditching him and coming back. These expectations include wearing heels, expensive lingerie, very forms of jewelry fancy arteries and whatnot very contrary arteries. to this Hold yeah, on. I know. attires attires sorry oh, I can't read. fancy it's arteries it's crazy <laughs> very contrary to this i've been an easygoing person whose main focus is to stay comfy and therefore i dress accordingly i honestly feel like this is very unreasonable and unfair to expect from someone to wear something sexy all the fucking time do you care what a girl wears when she's coming over to your house for netflix and chill Listen, I'm going to say it like this. Why Ac are you going to say something that's going to piss me off? Access is better than everything. All right, listen. I don't care what the hell they got wearing. As long as it's easy to take off and easy to put back on when I'm done. That so is can, such a so they can get the voice response. <laughs> listen, I know it was really easy to take off. So I know it's going to be really easy to put on. Your Uber's five minutes away. Uh, make sure you, I'm going to tip him five stars. So be nice to him. Don't forget both your shoes on the way out. Exactly, exactly. And take both your shoes on the no, way out. No, but like genuinely, does a guy care about what a girl is I, wearing? I would say no. I would say I think it does great for foreplay, and I think it does great for like long-term uh, relationships and longevity of relationships. I think it's important to show effort and show that you care to keep things interesting because I feel like you can become uh, repetitive in the things that you do, and you can, repetitive leads mm -hmm. to you know um, like boring, boring, and you don't ever want that. You know, you always want to keep. It spicy keep doing other things and i think the biggest thing i would say is like every once in a while is 100 percent, but it doesn't need to be every time because if it becomes every time then it becomes rep repetitive and if it's every once in a while it's, it's spontaneous you never know like hey maybe if i do this or this or this then i'll get this tonight not i gotta do the bare minimum and i know this is gonna come with it that's fair very fair so. i'm too lazy when it comes to that stuff <laughs> tmi but anyways that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the number one podcast in your world. We are your hosts, Chase Damore. And Gabrielle Moses. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Chase out. Bye.